so today as we go to the courts, your spirit is going to let you know exactly what is yours. I don't know what's yours, but you do. I don't know what you're fighting for, but you do. I don't know what the enemy has had his hand on, but you do. You know exactly what the enemy is stopping in your life. So before we even get started, I want you to begin thanking him. As we do in Arise Nation, we thank him for the bad. I want you to begin thanking him for the bad in the area that you know you should have a breakthrough in. One area. This is how we do in Arise Nation. One area, whether that be your finances, whether that be your business, whether that be your child, one of your children, whether that be your spouse, whether that be you in the way you operate with God, because many of you understand and know that in this season, God is requiring another level of us. We've never been this road. I said yesterday, we've never been down this road before. We don't know who we need to be. We don't know who needs to show up. We don't know what road we're walking. Because it's so new. It's so ancient, but new. Because you have no idea. It is so ancient, but at the same time, it's new to you. Right? You don't know who you have to be to be on this road. You don't know how you have to act to stay on this road. You don't know the tricks from the enemy because in this season, it's different. It is so new that even some of the tricks of the enemy doesn't even make sense in your mind right now. It is so ancient but new, this pathway that you are on, that you are like, What was that attack about? What was this situation for? We taught you since January, since this this club was formed, how to see the enemy, see the hands of the enemy, know your vices, how to operate in the courts, how to remove and silence his voice. We've given you tools after tools after tools. Yet some are still stumbling. But in this particular month, because we've stood, looked, and asked for the good way and asked for the ancient pathway in Jeremiah 6, 16. And many of us are on that pathway. We have no idea how to walk. And then add to that. We willingly said, God, I'll let you blindfold me in this season. I'm walking blindfolded. Not walking in the dark. Because walking in the dark means you're still fumbling, looking for the lights in an apartment, in a house, or in a place. Walking blindfolded said, you intentionally said, okay, God, you can cover my eyes. And I will walk with you where you need me to walk. And I will listen to your voice. I will hear you. And I will move in cadence with you your sound, your voice, your heartbeat at the nudge of your hand on my hand. That's willful. So that's how new and fresh the move of God is through your life every day in this month. Every day in this month, what God has required of you has been a new you and a new level of you and you have no idea how to do it. You have no idea how to keep moving. You have no idea what's next before you take that next step you have no idea and the enemy is trying to capitalize on that because he knows that you don't know he could tell that's how new my pastor yesterday said or the day before she said the ancient beings that have been released on this earth who is gonna match them The ancient entities that have been released on this earth, who is going to match them? Who's going to rival them? That's you and me. 
But that means we need to have the proper gear, attire, mindset, heart shift to do that. Why do you think he's taking you through uncharted territories? Why do you think he's taking you through areas that are so unfamiliar? He is charging you to come up higher. We've heard that before. Oh, it's so cliche in the church. It's so cliche. They say it all the time. But what this is this season today is he is charging you to be a new you. He is charging you every day and sometimes every moment of the day something else happens and you have no idea why or how it's going to benefit you or if it's to harm you. You have no idea because it's requiring a new you. So this morning, God laid it on my heart so that we can settle our account with God instead of looking to man. Many of us look to man. Too many of us look to man. It says, stop looking at man and let's silence the voice of the enemy. How do you do that? By going to the courts? By making sure that the accusations that the enemy has is null and void? By making sure that what you do daily, you repent of. You are seeking God's approval, not man. You are not seeking the approval of man or anybody else. So this morning, I want you to get in your mind the one area that has either been plaguing you or the one area that you know, that you know, that you know in your heart is your breakthrough. Because we have a lot of decrees in our rise nation. <clears throat> right now, we're on a seven-day decree on top of uh, October, entire month, Sheshvan of Hebrew and the Hebraic calendar decrees and affirmations daily. But what I want to shift, again, when my pastor said it, it hit me. It hit me. Even though it's what we're doing it's, it's the practicality of what she said, how it was spoken. She said, stop just decreeing, which she's also the one who told me years ago, don't decree it if you don't believe it. Don't speak it if you don't believe it. If you can't fathom it being in your hands, don't speak it. Because that's, that's just as bad as praying amiss. And that's what many of us do when I used to say, you stand in the mirror, put your hands on your hips, and you're like, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. And then you walk away and you're like, I hope I am. Or you walk away and you're still defeated. You feel no different. It was just a pep talk that didn't work. Because pep talks do work. I teach my daughter that. And I do it. And I see the fruit when she's in school, when she's trying to do something or she doesn't feel good. She's like, okay, I got this. I got this. I can do this. And I hear her under her breath and then she'll do it. So pep talks do work. But you got to believe. She believes because I taught her. When you can't, when you say I can't, that means you can't. So can you or can you not do something? You ask your body. You negotiate with your body, your mind, your mouth. You negotiate with your heart. To know that you can or you can't. So, I need you to think of the one thing that God has promised you. I know we have many, but that's what tricks us up. One thing. This month, the enemy has a legal right to take people out. Death is released in this month. It is what it is. You can't do nothing about it. It is. It's in his book. It is the month. You can see it by the fruit of this month. It's all about death. We just hide it. We were walking, me and my kids were walking in the grocery store. And our assignment in Arise Nation is to pray over any and all Halloween attire, food, whatever. You see that you're led to pray, lay hands on and speak and break any curse that's spoken over it. 
and I stopped because we were actually further south so it's a little it's a lot more Hispanic and they had a cup and I told my son to read it and I said do you know what that says he goes yep the day of the dead I said do you see how blatant it is do you see how in your face it is And he goes, well, why is it like that in other countries? I said, because in my eyes, only in America do we hide the truth by calling it Halloween. Now, those of us who know, we know All Hallows' Eve, um, Day of the Dead in Spanish, um, All the Witching Hour. I mean, there's, there's so many names. But if you ask any foreigner... And you ask them, what is that day? They will tell you the real name. We in America have labeled it Halloween to be fun and catchy and deceptive. Day of the Dead, October 31st. When you celebrate that, you are celebrating the enemy's high holy day and everything that it entails because that's one thing us believers don't understand you don't just partially do anything you partake in God's high holy day you are partaking in a high holy day of the king of the universe you partake in the high holy day of the enemy you partake in the king of darkness period the end even if it's just the decorations It it doesn't matter how. That's the lukewarm. That's the straddling the fence. That's the back and forth. That is the level of deceit that the enemy has been able to operate in the kingdom. So this morning again, one as this month, he is trying to kill everything and now when i say kill many of us immediately go to death of a person and that is definitely what is on this month death seances sacrifices blood sacrifice children sacrifice all of that yes most people go missing this month this is the highest month of missing people things death yes but that's not where i'm going this morning You got to remember when it says death is death, period. He is tearing the wheat from the tares. It is death in your finances. Death in your marriage. Death in a relationship that is extremely important to your next level. Death in your life. In areas that God has promised you, he's trying to bring death. Death. Period. And he's not coming for play play. He is coming straight for the juggler. Okay.